this is the method of how, historically speaking, that prayers to God have been invoked. Only to the Almighty God, however, who is unlike his creation. So no man is worthy of being God, because man is limited and finite. That's the relentless theme and the relentless message of Islam, which is what we're inviting people to. It makes perfect sense that as, being, as there is a creator, he'd want, he wants us to lead a life according to his will. That's very important to understand, you see. No, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Exactly. Makes all sense. Yes. Now, becoming Islam is very much a ubiquitously spreading religion. We've got two reverts just in standing behind you, English Englishmen, who become Muslim because it, it resonates. The more and more we speak to the public, the more people are compelled towards it. I would highly recommend you investigate it further, understand it, what its requirements, but its central theme, an overwhelming theme, one God who's created the whole universe, who's beyond the universe, and it fits perfectly into logic as well, you see. If, as per, as the perf, whereas with due respect to Christianity, where they invoke a man or a triune aspect, three God, three distinct um, beings, um, sorry, three distinct persons in one being. Yeah. Doesn't make sense, does it, at all? That's one why when uh, the beginning of man said it, I am and I am, so there are doubts yes. in my religion. So, yeah, but what, see, but the, the central doubt which you will have should be this. How can a man like Jesus be God when he himself makes no such claim? Rather, he, as I've mentioned to you, those particular, there's another very powerful passage because you, because you, you're a Christian, there's a verse in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, very powerful story. A rich young man, he runs up to Jesus and he says to him, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus says to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good for, except for only God alone. Hence, by proxy, he can't be God. Because if he's equivocating the goodness only to God and deferring it from himself, hence he can't be God. Does that make sense? So, so what we're invited to is that same God. The Arabic word for God is Allah. Did you know that, do you know what language Jesus spoke? No. Jesus spoke a language called Aramaic. Aramaic, Arabic and yeah. Hebrew, they are cognate languages to each other. In Arabic, the word for God is Allah. In Aramaic, it's Allah. This is the, this is the language that Jesus spoke. In Mark 12, 28, you, I'm sure you know the, um, the event where a scribe says to Jesus, Oh, Rabbi, what is the greatest of all commandments? Yeah. What does Jesus respond by saying? Never mind, I'll say. So basically he says, Hear thou, O Israel. Your Lord God, the Lord is one. So, so, you understand? So that is the one unseen God that we should worship. It says in the Old Testament that God cannot be seen at any time. And in John 5, 37, in John, uh, 1 John 4, 12, this is what Islam invites you to. And uh, the, our Creator, who's unlike his creation, it is, it's not his majesty that he comes um, uh, uh, as a man. Is beyond that and the Bible testifies to that as well hence Islam literally means submission to the will of God we believe all the prophets were Muslims by definition Christ did not go around preaching I have chosen for you a new religion it's called Christianity you must follow that rather these were the, the term Christianity came about as a result of when the disciples were spreading Christ's message they went into an area called Antioch which is in current day South South Turkey they the, the locals observing their message disparagingly call them Christians, those who follow Christ. Similar thing with Judaism. Moses doesn't say anywhere, this is your religion called Judaism. Again, this was a religion given to them by those who were against them. They came from the land of Judea, from the tribe of Judah, hence they were given the title of Judaism. But this was not something established or mentioned by God or the prophets in the, in the Bible. But Islam is different. Allah says in the Quran, Today, I have completed my favor upon to you and chosen for you Islam as a means for you to live. It's very powerful, you see. So, for example, Christianity came 2,000 years ago, Judaism 3,000 years ago. The question here, if I, if I may ask you, what religion do you think Abraham would have been? In your view, which faith or which religion would Abraham be, the father of all the nations? When there was no Judaism, there was no Christianity, what religion would he have been? Yes, you know what, he would have been a Muslim because he submitted his will to God. As we know, at the time of Abraham, 
these religions were were not um, uh, you know at that time in um, fi in the final we believe from the time of Adam all the way to the time of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon them that they spat, they preached the message of Islam which you, which essentially means submission to the will of God it's even unique in its title where you got Christianity following their major protagonist, they're giving the name of their major protagonist, Judaism, Judaism from the tribe of Judah, the land of Judea, geographical area, Hinduism coming from the river Indus, Buddhism coming from Buddha. They all give their central tenets to their major protagonists, whereas Islam by definition simply means submission to the will of Almighty God. So we will argue Jesus was a Muslim. How? Because he submitted his, his will. What does he say? I do not do my will, but the will of God who has sent me. Does this make sense? If that appeals to you, then becoming a Muslim is very simple. You testify there's only one God. Yep. God sends messengers of which Moses, Jesus, Abraham, Muhammad, peace be upon them, were messengers of God who came to their communities to redeem them, to bring them back to worshipping God. If that's something you incline towards, you can become Muslim today. Very straightforward. And many, many people are becoming Muslims. I'm not just saying that as a source of... Yeah, um, no, but no. It's a, it's, it's a tremendous hike in uh, uh, we do this work regularly so we can testify that and Allah says this in the Quran as well that when truth when truth comes falsehood is bound to perish for falsehood for falsehood by its very nature is bound to perish so I would invite you to become Muslim it's very straightforward you testify as I said there's only one God God sends messengers uh, they're all co-equal in the sense of their uh, tasks and if you make that test, you can become Muslim today. Would you like to do that? Yeah. Yep. God, Allah bless you. Right. First of all, do you want to feel a bit more? You're carrying heavy. Do you want to put your stuff in a corner, maybe? Okay, you sure? Okay, yeah. fine. So listen to me carefully. Well, I mean, just asking you to hear this point very carefully. So I will recite something in Arabic. And we will offer you. We're not from around this area. I've come from East London myself. So. Um, uh, have I got a little bit of Cockney accent? Have I? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, okay. So, by that very volition, where do we go to? We, you just recite after me, and then we will offer you some assistance in terms of, if you want the assistance, of course, in terms of giving you a contact number of revert organizations who can certainly help you and give you further tips and advice as to what to do. So, sorry, beg your pardon. Let me just take this away. I cannot be disturbed by the, uh, Right. So, what we'd like to you say, just recite the. The, the following after me. I'll say it in Arabic and then you can say it in English after. It's very slowly. I'm going to do it real, real slow. It's going to be so slow you're going to think, oh, but you're going to be able to do it nicely. Say the following. Say, Ash, Hadu, Allah, Ila, Ha, Il, Allah, Wa, Ash, Hadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadan, Rasul, Allah. I bear witness and I testify that there is only one God worthy of worship and I testify the Prophet Muhammad is God's final messenger from the preceding messengers which came before him. With that you are now a Muslim, officially you are a Muslim. How does that feel? Feel good? Allah bless you. Allah bless you. I'm going to say, Subhanallah. Now, secondly, this conversation we've had is going to be up on YouTube. If you're not happy for that, your face is shown. We can blur you out. Fantastic. Absolutely. Number two, we'll give you the name of the channel. We've got. We, we did. Um, so you can watch our conversation. And I like a Barashik. Without doubt, this sister must be blurred under all conditions. Yep. Yeah? Remember this. Yeah. So you will be blurred. That's my assurance to you. Number two, there was a lady. It wouldn't bother me, but um, no, that's fine. I got crazy up there. Yeah, that's fine. No, she shouldn't even be outside now. To be honest, <laughs> okay, cool. Had to go out. Oh, God bless you. So the second point I wanted to raise uh, raise uh, uh, with you is now providing you with actual concrete help. Do you live in Oxford? If, if I don't mind me asking you, I'm going to give you a number of a sister who is absolutely very active. She's a very nice sister. She'll definitely be able to help you. Okay. So we'll do that off camera, and. Um, um, we're going to finish speaking to the camera and that will be it then. Um, so Allah bless you. Um, so let me just finish speaking to the camera and I'll give you the number. So, so okay, so Salaam Alaikum. So we've seen, mashallah, a very pleasant sister who's become Muslim. Allah, it's nothing of eloquence on my part. I'm just someone who just says a few words. I'm very, you know, limited myself. 
Allah is the one who's guided her. Allah's put it in her heart to become Muslim. May Allah guide her and protect her. Ameen.